this is another video I'm making right here and probably I believe okay my name is Oscar Anna. sorry I've just started so rough today so my name is Oscar Anna. welcome back guys and today's video I'm your host I hope I'll be always your host until whatsoever happens I'm gonna be telling you one thing uh, it's how to get internship in Tanzania yes it's gonna be internship if you haven't seen the other video that I made about an elective student or an elective daughter doctor sorry not a daughter make sure you hit the click oh is it gonna be here or here somewhere i don't know somewhere on this link cards it's gonna be there or at the end i'm gonna have to post it over there so you wanna like apply internship in tanzania in tanzania and i've seen people telling you about that but you have to know like there's gonna be there, there's always gonna be a difference i'm not sure about the um, other countries i've heard about pakistan that is such countries like Pakistan, they don't really pay internships, like interns, sorry. The interns don't get paid, that's what I heard. Still doing such to confirm also. But, so today's video is going to be telling you how to get internship in Tanzania. So let's get started. First, intro. So welcome back guys, and there are only very easy three steps to do right now. You don't have to worry, I'm not going to be explaining out of like 20 minutes video, I've seen that on the internet, I'm going to be straightforward right now. So the first thing you need to like, know one thing first. There are only three steps and these three steps, they will differ if you're a Tanzanian or if you're a foreigner. The first big difference is that if you're a Tanzania, there is good inside it. Because you're going to get paid. Sincerely, that's good. Who doesn't want to get paid anyway? And if you're a foreigner, the bad news, which is really disappointing, you have to be the one who's paying. Does that really make sense to you? Yeah, you may heard me wrong, but it is right. If you're a foreigner, you'll come here and you'll pay. Same goes to those people who actually are elective, they end up paying, which is very sad. Like, pretty much sad. Very, very sad. If you haven't seen that video, please make sure you check that out. The elective people are paying. The ones that you call elective doctor or elective student, they're paying out of money. And I think I should have said that in the other video. I feel so bad I didn't say that. Anyway, get, let's get to the video. Is that um, the first step uh, you're going to get involved with this is first, you need to have your documents and you have to, you need to have your money ready because they're going to get late, like you're going to get paid, but it's going to be late. Like sometimes they even pay you two months after you act, which is very stressful because if then you have a lot of debts and if you have no money, I don't know how you're gonna survive, but you need to have some money and you need to have your documents, your passport, for those who are foreigners, for those who are not foreigners, they just have like their, teen, their student number and their registration. They're like, they are some sort of documents they get from school, like they have graduated, the graduation document, and also they are supposed to have their, they're like, um, Registration numbers and issues like that. Those are okay. Now for those who are abroad, I'm sure those are the ones who are, they're the ones who are actually watching. You need to have two things. That is your passport plus your certificate of finishing university in your country or in whatsoever country abroad you've studied. But from that, you need to have just your transcription and you'll be ready to apply. That is the first easy step you should do. And if you don't know the link, uh, for those Big hospitals, the two hospitals, Mwimbili and Mugazira, the big hospitals that are actually best for you to like practice the medicine or MBBS. Uh, I'm gonna leave the link in the description right there, or oh, I think I should just leave it in the description where you're gonna use. So the first step is just go and get ready with your money and your documents, and then let's go to the second steps. The second step is register and then do an exam. This step, everyone passes through it, like. So it's either you're a Tanzanian or you're a foreigner, you have to pass through this step. And the good thing about this, and also it's a bad thing, because sometimes I think I have a feeling like it wasn't supposed to be like everyone's supposed to pass through this. Like someone was supposed to be taken behind, which is kind of bad and also good. I don't know why I say this statement all the time, but see, this is the thing. Like uh, the second step is just after you register on that website I've given you down the same, down the comment on the description so after you register you just have to prepare for the exam now the exam is always done only twice in a year so the first exam is always done on october october 
October and the second exam is always done on uh, on March so those dates so when you for example you had finished your school on September then you can get your preparation on September so as on October you can actually oh sorry the phone was ringing so you can get your preparation on September and then on October you can do your exam so as on November you'll be starting your internship in Tanzania but remembering rule number one actually on the registration that if you're a foreigner you ain't got no payment but happy for those who are try Tanzanians they'll be paid no bias just being honest that's that's the that's the truth so on the second part as I said you do the exam now they before they change the ministry they used to say that if you actually uh, pass that's when you go but actually right now due to the tendency of having few should say few like a little amount of uh, not a little amount like a low number of interns so they tend to like after you finish the exam you just get ready for internship then they will uh, there is the, there's a diff, diff, diffusion at the end of post intern exam so if you know like there's a pre intern exam and there's, there's a post intern so in that same time there will be people who will be doing the pre intern on October and the other people will be doing also post intern on uh, November, November and then also there's another pre intern on March and then there's post intern on April so in each, in each year we have like four exams two pre interns and two post interns so you should just know that for example if you are a foreigner you want to come and practice your medicine here after you finish your six years that's when you can come here please note this after you finish your six years of medicine that's when you can come and apply here if you come here and you've studied abroad i repeat if you come here and you've studied abroad and you have finished only five years and you want to practice as an internship you're getting it all wrong you end up being as an elective so some people don't tell you that which is very bad for you and you think that you're passing through internship it's so painful but it's not internship i'm sorry but you have to know that's an elective and i've already explained that in another video which is right there or in the description just check it or at the end of the video too i'll put it there so that's the second step now the third step is just in a very easy step that is getting started in less than two weeks like after you finish your examination there will be no diffusion like diffusion of people who will not have to pass the most of like all the all the people all participants will be passed through to go and start the internship but the diffusion of people who must graduate post intern that's when they're going to diffuse those people so in the pre intern they don't like how should i say it we used to say kuchuja in our language but i think in english it's like stopping some of the people so as if they haven't passed the exam so in the pre-intern they don't do that most of them really go for the internship but the post-intern exam is one that is actually even they will say it's hard it's hard even to pass but all those are just rumors but if you have passed the pre i think you can pass the post the best thing is just continue up keeping up the studies so those are the three main i think i haven't even used so much time of yours and if i have used a lot of time but i think this video is important is just to know a quick recap is that there are only three steps and they're very easy for those who are studying in tanzania it's very easy the steps are easy the first one is just you apply the second one you do the exam the third one you get started to your respective hospital in less than two weeks and then for those who are actually from abroad the first one prepare your documentation and your money for paying the second one is getting the exam and the third one it is going to the hospital in less than two weeks so the thing is the only difference is that the abroad people have to start differently like paying and then they're not paid also yeah but the examination we all do the same exam plus it's all done in english not in our language so hey that's the best part anyway so hope you guys have enjoyed this video hope you guys have enjoyed this video and there will be more videos coming up i know this is a little update on this thing so i'll be showing you a lot of things on this channel i'll be showing some updates on what's happening i'll be showing the travel places that you should be going and those who are actually interested in studying i'll be just letting you know and i hope you guys enjoyed until next time peace out and bye bye